Good morning, good morning. Have a look at this. This is quite the frost. It hasn't been snowing, it is just frost. I'm not actually on the way to the allotment or have anything to do with the vlog. I'm on my way over to St George's in Tooting, but we're just driving through the park and it is just so gorgeous, I had to show you. <laughs> yeah, it's just magnificent. Normal service will resume shortly. morning yet another glorious day <laughs> it's uh yeah blue skies all the rest of it like last week um but we came up here and we started discussing what we needed to do and i feel a bit <laughs> there were so many things that needed doing that now i kind of don't know where to start <sighs> we started looking at the compost bins and how um because obviously we're moving those like we were we started last week but obviously they're full and the one that was ready was fairly easy to deal with because we just bagged it up because it's ready. But the other two, we're gonna to have to empty into something else. And yeah, logistics have kind of thrown me for one this morning. So I'm gonna completely ignore it and get on with something else. Uh, bed down here, you know, I made the carrot bed out of the slatted thing. Well, we've kind of got one that we haven't done anything with yet. So I'm gonna do that. That's my aim. Yeah. It's sitting there in the rain and the outside just drop it you should really learn where you're supposed to put them you should really learn where you're supposed to put them so this is my main job that i want to get done today is to get this bed sorted and ready to go I've just been using it as kind of a storage area. It's got all these extra slats on top of it, which are eventually going to be moved up to be a leaf mold bin up at the other end of the plot when we sort all the compost area out. But for the time being, I've just been storing them on here and uh, I need to get rid. So they're gonna go into the shed. I have to level off the ground. So I'm gonna dig a little bit of a trench for it to sit in so that I can get it perfectly level and then get some soil in it. What I'm planning to grow in here is herbs. So the, the other little one that's under the EnviroMesh box behind me is the carrot bed. And that's going to stay carrot bed for quite a long time because we sifted the soil and we would put a lot of effort into getting the soil right in there. This isn't going to be anything like that. We've got a lot of spent compost and bits and pieces that we've been storing since last year. And that's what's going to go in for the majority to fill this one up. It's going to be mainly um, perennial Mediterranean type herbs. None of them need particularly rich soil. I want to get some sage in here, some different sage. I've got tricolour up the other end. I want to get a really good silvery grey one in here. And I also want to grow olive herb, which I actually grew about 10 years ago in a pot on a roof. And I'd completely forgotten about it until Urban Herbs did a feature on it on Instagram. And I'd completely forgotten about it. And it's such an amazing herb. It's a santanilla. So it's like um, really aromatic, little tiny, tiny leaves. And it produces these wonderful daisies on top. But the leaves themselves, you can use them as like a really savoury taste, but like sort of olives. And you can put them on pizza or put them in a salad or in soups and stews and stuff. And it was so delicious. Can't believe I'd forgotten about it. So I'm definitely going to get one of them in here but what I mean by that is that none of those kind of herbs need really rich soil so I'm going to be using all of my spent compost and stuff just to top this up they don't need anything too special and because I've already got a load of vermiculite and perlite mixed in because the soil has been used previously it's going to really have good drainage and it's not going to get too soggy and all the rest of it so I think it's going to be perfect this spot also has maximum sun on the allotment basically it doesn't get shade from anything so yeah, I think it should be perfect for that. I've just got to get it levelled off because otherwise I'm going to spend the next three years staring at it being irritated. <laughs> So 
So now it's level, I'm just going to backfill where I've had to dig out at the sides with what I've ended up piling into the middle. And then we should be good to go. Because it's a slatted box rather than solid, I'm gonna to have to line it. Uh, I'm gonna use weed proof matting just to stop the soil falling through the sides. When I did the carrot box, I don't know if you remember, but I dug all the turf away from the bottom of that and moved it to other parts of the allotment that needed a bald patch covering. But that was in like September, October time. And that was fine because the grass would take no problem. I think if I started trying to move turf now and we've got such frosty weather overnight, it's just not going to take. So I've left the grass in the bottom of here, which means that once I've done the weed proof matting on the sides, I'm going to put cardboard on the bottom just to stop the grass growing back up through it. Seriously, it's like that cardboard was made for this bed. Look at that for a perfect fit. <laughs> Haven't bent the sides, nothing. Absolutely magnificent. Okay, that's one thing achieved. We're gonna call it a day actually, even though we haven't been up here very long, but we're both starving and we forgot to bring any water with us. Uh, so we're thirsty and hungry and we've got another beautiful, sorry, I hope you're not getting um, from the wind. Oh dear. Um, yeah, we're, so we're gonna go home, have something to eat and um, use this afternoon to go to the garden center because we need peas for one thing. We don't have any peas. What else did we need? Was it just peas? I've got my fingers crossed that they're gonna have some field beans there. Uh, but I suspect not. Anyway, that's where we're going. I'm going to tidy up here and head off. <laughs> Okay, we are fed, we are watered, we're now going to the garden centre.
This is Adrian Hall's in Sheen. Great little garden centre. Actually, last summer they had some incredible veg um, that was like sold as plug plants. They were really fantastic, so healthy, and the huge range of different varieties. I was really impressed. But I'm here for seeds today, so let's head into the shop proper. Back away from the houseplants, Jessie, it's seeds. Seeds. Ah. Oh. Well, we don't seem to have timed this particularly well because <laughs> this is normally completely covered in seeds and it's not. And this is the only peas they've got here, which are marrowfat, and we don't want marrowfat peas, we want proper, proper peas. Right, well, they're obviously having a refurb. That was not very successful. I might as well go and have a look outside though. They might have something exciting out here. Well, it's a bad time of year, but these chaps have obviously been got by the frost and they look horrific. Oh dear. Oh dear. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, that wasn't very successful. And unfortunately, because we've come out this way, so I've got, putting a mask on that's like full of dust goes right up your nose <laughs> um now unfortunately we've come this way towards sheen and there isn't really any other options for garden centers along this way so there's just one other place we could try there is a home base near me i mean home base is normally useless for most things but they might just have peas so we're gonna go there <laughs> Let's have another go. You've got gladioli here, Mum. You've got the price of them, £9. Yeah, that was being q wasn't it? Mm. Well, there's still a big bag of them. Though. That's true. We're getting distracted here, Mum. Should we go down and find the seeds? Oh, that is much cheaper, yeah. What yeah. variety is it though? Um, Mura Murado. Mum's got distracted at the um, gladioli, so I'm going to go down to the seeds. <laughs> Ooh, this is a bit better. This is a bit better. Right. So we're looking for peas, field beans. Um, what have we got? We have got peas, masses of peas. Onward, that's the one they had at Adrian Hall. So we've got Meteor, that's a great pea. Um, who else have we got? Um, oh, Sugar Snap. I'm thinking about doing some Sugar Snaps this year instead of Monge too. That's the same one. Ambassador and what's this one Lynette's oh Hearst Green Shaft this is the one we normally do I might go back to Kelvard and Wonder no I think I'm going to do Hearst Green Shaft but like I was just saying I actually think I'm going to not grow Monge 2 this year I think it's one of those things that I love looking at them growing I think they're gorgeous but I don't actually end up eating them and we've got a freezer full of them so I think I'm going to grow Sugar Snaps instead of Monge 2 this year hmm that's the idea anyway and the other thing I'm after is field beans. So let's see if we can find any green manure. Well, here's some, but no field beans. It's understandable, it's completely the wrong time of year. You would normally be sowing them in autumn, but I was hoping they had some left because I want to grow them just for the field bean tops rather than as a green manure because we've just been eating them so much and they're so delicious. They're not up with the broad beans, are they? No, nope. although, Look what I've just spotted. Mm -mm -mm. And this, Black Beauty. Oh, Black Beauty's back on the menu, chaps. Success! Go 
good morning. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Yesterday when we left here, we were uh, totally assured by the weatherman that today was gonna to be another glorious blue skies, sunny day. Um, it's not, it's completely gray, which means that it's absolutely freezing. Uh, everything's frozen. <laughs> I do have a bit of work that I wanted to finish off from yesterday that I didn't get done though so um, we're gonna stick around up here for as long as we can before we're too cold um, but it's a real shame because we kind of had it all planned out get up here early it's what is it now 10 o'clock get up here and then we'd spend the whole day and have lunch and do all that kind of stuff but actually it's a bit cold and because mum's not in full action mode like she's not going to be out there doing digging or something to keep warm she's going to get cold really fast so that's a bit disappointing but never mind so the things that i was planning to do today which i think i'll still be able to get done is mulch the asparagus although we might have to leave it a bit because i think the manure is frozen at the moment <laughs> Uh, so I might have to leave that bit, but where I moved some stuff from outside, you know, when I was leveling off that bed yesterday, the like slatted bed, um, where we moved that from originally, which was outside the chicken house, I need to level that all off for, uh, flowers for next year. So I can always get on with that. And I need to go and stare at the compost bins a bit longer and think about how we're going to move them. So yeah, plenty of stuff to get on with. Just should have brought some hand warmers with me. Didn't even bring my, um, you know, like the wristy things that I was wearing last week. Didn't even bring them with me. But for anybody who was concerned about my footwear last week, I don't have um, silly little flimsy shoes on anymore. Oh, those ones. These ones. <laughs> yeah, they're they're not going to get wet at least. Okay. Okay, it is keep moving. I've gone and had a look at the compost. I'm not gonna do anything with that today. Um, couple of reasons. Firstly, I didn't bring the drill with me and what I wanna do, I'm gonna need the drill for. So um, yeah, that's off the scheme today. So I can just ignore that. And I'm gonna to focus totally down this end next to the shed. What's first? First is to clear away all of the top half of the slatted bed that I just dumped yesterday. Okay, well, while I'm doing a bit of a tidy down this area, I'm going to tackle this bit of trellis we've got across here. So this trellis I put in about uh, three years ago. Well, yeah, three years ago when we moved the shed from the other end, we moved everything down here and this patch was just straight open to the path. And it just so happened that a garden that I was doing, they had a load of wind damage and all their trellis came down and they wanted it all replaced new. And so all of this was just being scrapped. So uh, yeah. I did the only respectable thing and took it home with me and then we put it up here which has made a huge difference to this whole bottom area it's really really lovely 
I've got four plants growing up against it. I've got a clematis, which is the first thing I'm going to tackle here because when we first bought it, it was in peak season, so it was all um, covered in flowers. And I didn't want to chop it back, although it would have been the most sensible thing to do. It just looks so beautiful. I didn't chop it back, but that's meant that as it's grown last year, it's just grown in sort of one clump. And now I'm going to chop it right back and kind of splay what's left of it so that it's a bit more intertwined next year rather than just like a clump of pink. I also have a jasmine growing up here. It's a real jasmine, not one of those tracheospernum nonsenses. So it has that incredible scent. I absolutely love jasmine. And this is a really pretty one called Clotted Cream. So it's got very, very pale, pale, like primrose yellow flowers. It's absolutely lovely. Um, but that needs a bit of work. It's all a bit intertwined and the one that it's most intertwined with is my Akibia quinata up this end, which is the chocolate vine. Another absolute stunner. They're not evergreen, but I made a decision, although having evergreen up here would provide sort of year round privacy. I really like the seasons changing and I like being able to witness this and definition between the bareness of the winter and then in spring when it all comes flooding back and it's all lush and magnificent. I just really like that, which is why I ended up going with this kind of plant rather than going for some really dense evergreen ivy or tracheia or something like that. I kind of went for something a bit softer. So as these are growing throughout the summer, not just now, I've been like winding their stems back in through the trellis. The bit that I'm concerned about mainly is to stop them getting up into the trees because the oak tree that's above us here, its branches hang quite low at the back there. And if one of these guys you know, gets a grip on one of them, it will just rock it straight up into the tree. It'll stop producing anything lovely down here at the bottom and just head up into the tree and be a nightmare. So, hey Lil, what are you doing, pussycat? What are you doing, pussycat? Ah, ah, ah. Fat cat, you are. Look at that fat cat. Okay, mum is clearing some space in the netting shed to get the wooden slats in there stored until we can get them reassembled at the top. And I reckon I should probably do some more raking. Okay, well, raking certainly warms you up, doesn't it? <laughs> right, so the next job on the list is I have got two like pre-made, they used to be outside the polytunnel, but they're two like pre-made, really short little tiny beds, little things, they're about a foot, foot long and like, yeah, or maybe two foot long and one foot wide, they're tiny anyway. Um, and they're gonna go on either side of the barbecue and then come, so I'll fill them up. I'm gonna put cardboard at the bottom, fill them up and then come spring. We'll get them packed out with flowers and maybe some more herbs, keeping with the theme down here. And yeah, it should look really, really nice. So I'm kind of like slowly boxing this area in so it's more like kind of a social space. Because I'm not digging the turf away from underneath, I'm going to put the cardboard down, stop the grass growing through and fill them up with compost. I used all of our spare spent compost to fill up the slatted bed the other day. But what I do have is where we pulled away the, the old slatted bed, we have a lot of excess compost here and I'm gonna make a little flower bed, but I don't need this much soil. So I'm gonna take this away. This is really rough. There's a lot of sticks in here and also it was originally mostly leaf mold and we collected a lot of leaf mold off the main path and it had, you just don't see it when you're picking it up, but because it's in like an area next to the school, it had a lot of like crisp packets and things in it. So we end up, every time we use this, we end up picking out a lot of plastic from the mix, but you know.
that's pretty much that sorted now. Um, I'm just looking forward to getting stuff planted in there. Actually, I'm so excited about herbs this year. I might just fill these with herbs as well. <laughs> that's exciting. Anyway, yeah, very pleased with that. I think it might be time for lunch because I'm starving. Nothing lovely and dirty. <laughs> right, let's get that door closed so we can heat it. Soup in here. Yes. Have we got two chairs out? I've got one here, you've got your chair, and I've got my chair. Okay. Time to assemble the spoon. <laughs> I mean, we had planned this to be sat outside in yes. the glorious sunshine rather than huddled in the shed freezing, but <laughs> never mind. Okay, all those leaves I've just swept up. All that stuff that's going on at the compost end, all the things we've got to move around. It's like chicken before egg, like I can't, it's like working out which ones we can move without, which ones we can move to then refill, to then empty again, to get things all shifted over. And it's very, um, it's logistics. But what I'm gonna do is, you know the space that we've just cleared, um, where I was saying that the newts spend the winter, Mum's just going to pick up one of the unused like Dalek type bins that we've got um, from around the corner of the shed. She's going to pick that up. We're going to put it on that patch and then just put all these leaves in there. That would be them temporarily. I mean, when we're ready in the spring to start moving things around, they will have at least shrunk a bit and they won't blow back around the allotment. So it's kind of temporary storage, but we're going to get them in there before we leave today. Because otherwise, raking into piles, wind blows, not raked into piles anymore. <laughs> All right. Yep. <laughs> right, I'll be fine. Okay, so if I whiz down and pick up these, okay. and um, we can just, and then, and then we can both get them in there. Okay. Excited? That's something. <laughs>
God, a mulched bed is a pleasing thing, isn't it? <laughs> right, we are going to head off now. Uh, what I need to remember to take with me are these. The drain pipes for sowing the seed. Ta-da! Okay, we've got peas, we've got wine, we've got drain pipe. What more could one want of an evening? <laughs> so I'm gonna be sowing, starting some peas off in a drain pipe this year. Last year, I mentioned on here that I'd had a really hard time every time I've tried this before, actually getting the peas to slide out of the drain pipe at the end. But I was showed some fairly nifty kind of technique last year when I couldn't do it. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to put that into practice this year and show you how to do it rather than just tip them all over like I have done previously. <laughs> so the last couple of years, I have just direct sown my peas straight into the ground, pre-sprouted them between two layers of kitchen roll um, and just direct sown them straight into the ground and I've not had a problem with mice. But I'm slightly concerned that this year because of what happened to all of my field beans. I mean, they just got completely taken out. I planted them and they were whipped out immediately by mice, squirrels, whoever it was. I've just got a feeling that this year they're just really on it with stealing things. So I'm going to have a backup set in uh, the drain pipe at home. And I've had problems getting the peas out of the drain pipes before. I think I mentioned this last year, but uh, I was I was given some reliable tips on how to slide them out. <laughs> so I'm going to put them to the test this year. So anyway, why sowing peas in a drain pipe? It's all about that being able to slide them out. So I'm just going to fill this with compost, sow my peas in it, get them started indoors in the conservatory down here. So. Our conservatory is a little bit like a heated greenhouse. It never gets below about eight degrees. So it's kind of acts like a heated greenhouse. So I'm going to just fill these up, start these indoors, and I'm also going to soak some ready to start going outdoors. But this is what I'm doing today is drain pipe. I said that these are the ones I'm doing. I'm doing Hearst Green Shaft, which is the one I've done for the last couple of years. And I just find it a really reliable and really tasty pea. Not last year, but the year before, I sowed three different varieties. Now, unfortunately, I can't remember what the other two were, but the Hearst Green Shaft, taste-wise, was just so much better. So I'm kind of sticking with that again this year. Okay, put me ends on. These are, you know, when you have a drain pipe and you have the piece, this is just an end blocker. So it's just gonna go. packets on the varieties they say um you know really good for overwintering and good for early sowing and stuff her screen shaft don't say that but these are the ones i've used for the last couple of years and they've been fab so you know generally the rule is take what they say on the packet with a pinch of salt anyway how many of these am i going to sow in here i don't need a whole packet i think i'm probably going to do half the packet and it's just a case of sprinkle them on and then roughly kind of lay them out so that they're all you know, about this far apart. So 
So last week, I did come up this way. <laughs> so last week when I was talking about um, not using seed compost, um, when you want really fine seed compost is if you've got really, really fine seed. Like I don't know if you've ever sown celery or celeriac or anything. The seed is just like fairy dust. It's so fine. But these peas, obviously peas, not fine. You really don't need a fine tilth on your on your pea compost. They can just go pretty much into anything that's really rough <laughs> and they'll be just fine. So I'm just going to space them out roughly. It's really not a big deal. They don't have to be well spaced. And when I slide these out into the bed, I'll just slide the whole shebang straight into a trough in the bed so that they're not disturbed. Nothing else is, I say they're not disturbed. The reason that I've had problems with them before is because they're very disturbed. Because when I try and slide them out, they just fall over and then they're all upside down and then they're really disturbed. They don't love that. But <laughs> if you can manage to not tip them all out of your drain pipe, this is a great technique. <laughs> more in there. is like to rather than putting it in a lump and then spreading it because you'll knock all the peas out of the way so just like you know a thin layer right the way over the whole top and then just push it down so that you're not disturbing your incredibly carefully placed peas okay peas in fab i'm going to take them downstairs give them a water in the back garden and stick them in the conservatory and we should be good to go I've still got half a packet left. I'm going to set these off to soak, but I'm not going to do them immediately. I think I'll probably do that next week because I'm going to try and stagger my peas a bit. So I will sow another lot of peas about every three weeks. I mean, it depends on the weather as to how well they do and which bed I'm going to put them in. Um, if we're having a really hot period, so I'll probably split, split them between two beds, one that gets a lot of sun and one that's in the shade, because if we have a really hot spring, uh, they really appreciate being in the shade. And if they if we have a bit of a pants spring, they'll really appreciate being in the sun. And if you're doing them sort of every three weeks or so, you do catch the good weather at some point and they also don't take a lot of time to go so if you're doing a crop which is going to take forever to get going it's not worth kind of spreading them across your plot because it takes up too much space takes up too much time but with peas they're in out really really fast and you can just kind of plonk them in any gaps you've got along the way so when I slide these out and put these in the ground I will put my pea canes straight over the top of them so Oh, this is like a bazooka. So I'll be putting canes here and here and then arching them up so that I won't be kind of putting the canes right the way through the center of them. So I'm not gonna be disturbing their roots. Yeah. So before I tidy up this terrible mess I've made, I'm gonna get in the black beauty aubergines that I found at home base. So that's good, get them started. They'll only be a week behind the others. So no issues there. I mean, you can be planting them in March. So it's not like I'm running out of time. I'm pretty pleased with that. There we go, peas aubergines. I've got to do cheers to everybody. Cheers to Monday Club. Cheers to not Monday Club. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic week ahead of you. We've got a grey week ahead, apparently. Although my iPhone, you know, where it shows you the weather, it's recently updated and now I don't understand what it's telling me on the weather. It's got all these like bars across the screen rather than just being like cloudy rainy all the rest of it so i have to work out how to understand the weather but from what i can see it looks like it's going to be pretty gray for the whole week and then we're going to hit some really cold really sunny weather so yeah exciting times so cheers chaps
I'll see you next week. Okay.